Well, it started out, I was originally a partner with a small corporation with four stores called Ideal Pharmacy. My partner was starting to downsize the biggest new store with the biggest potential on Flushing Road because it was not expanding as quickly as we hoped it would be. So he uh, started reducing some of the inventory a little bit and I said, well, how do I get out of this corporation and hire my son? He says, well, we can work that out, you know. So I traded all my stock in Ideal Pharmacy, picked up the corporate name of Diplomat Pharmacy, made it all legal, and made the call to Phil. Dad called me just a little before I graduated. I think he did the paperwork in, in March, but I think he called me at the end of April or May, and I was gonna graduate in, the, in early May, and told me that he had swapped his shares for the, for the company for one store, and he said, kind of get your butt out of school and come work with me. Back then, as a pharmacist, you had to work as an intern for six months before you could be licensed. So for the next six months, Dad had to work, uh, you know, nine to 10 o'clock at night six days a week plus some Sundays. So he was working 70 plus hours while I was getting registered. It was a case of always being ahead of the curve. We were one of the first compounding pharmacies in the country. Um, when some of the newer therapies came on board and they were expensive and they were challenging, we didn't care about that. We were one of the first people to put the new expensive cancer drugs on our shelf. We were always the pharmacy that would find a way to offer the service. And, and so it wasn't any individual service or any individual marker, I don't think, in time. It was just a mindset of if it needed to be done, we would find a way to get it done. You know, the tradition from corner drugstore to specialty for us didn't happen overnight. I would say, Dad, it really happened over a long period of time. It was, it was two or three years in the process, yes. Every time that we were going to do something unique, um, it gave us an opportunity to expand, and doctors started recognizing our ability to take care of patients in a way that the other stores weren't. And, uh, and so that kind of exacerbated. One doctor would let another doctor know that we were taking care of some unique patients, and they would send us their challenging patients. And, and again, it just uh, over a period of time, we came to recognize that we were doing all the things in uh, our little corner of Michigan that some of the specialty pharmacies around the country were doing. That's when we decided that really we should expand this out and turn it into a national company. That was in the early 2000s. One of the turning points for Diplomat was when we when we stopped selling cigarettes, and I think it was 1995. It wasn't just cigarettes. Yeah. The total tobacco department. All tobacco products. And so what we did was, rather than just to stop selling them, we wanted to make an impact. We wanted to get the community to recognize that tobacco had so many challenges. His ideas again. Yeah, and we were always pretty creative. And so I called a local paving company. I said, we want to crush tobacco. We want to crush the smoking addiction. And uh, I said, let's take our cigarettes. And we had $5,000 worth of cigarettes that we could have returned. We could have gotten our money back for the cigarettes, but we wanted to make a statement. And so we took our cigarettes and we put them out of the parking lot and we took a half page ad out in the Flint Journal and asked our customers that wanted to, um, uh, to crush their own smoking habit to bring their cigarettes in and we would give them a coupon. We would buy their cigarettes back from them. And so we had a number of customers from the community come and we got anti-smoking groups from the community and we got a big steamroller that they let me drive and we steamrolled <laughs> tobacco in the parking lot. And it was picked up nationally. It became a big story across the country. I had a call on the phone uh, from a gentleman. He started talking to me about, you know, from Washington, and I, I hadn't heard the introduction. And I said, I'm sorry, can you tell me who you are again? And he said, oh yeah, I'm the Assistant Surgeon General of the United States. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and complimenting us on, um, on the important move that we'd made in getting rid of tobacco products. Made us smile a little bit that one of the big pharmacy chains made the decision to stop selling tobacco products nationwide just in this past year, almost 20 years after we made the decision. Well, I think what hasn't changed at Diplomat is our focus on one patient at a time. Um, you know, we always use themes like, like family owned and operated, and uh, you know, always our themes are always around customer service and individual patient care. And I think that hasn't changed at Diplomat. We need to make sure we stay focused that at the end of everything we do, there's a patient in need. And oftentimes that patient is in you know, serious need. They have significant health issues. And, and so we have to make sure that we keep the human element in our company. Even as a public company, we don't have to lose uh, the human element of what we do as pharmacists. Taking good care of the patients, everything else will fall into place. I was blessed with a family support, the whole family. I'm talking about a wife and family that 
to be, it's a necessity. You've got to have family support. And then I was secondly blessed with the opportunity to be able to work with a son and daughter and, and many long-term employees who were doing nothing but making Diplomat a success. Without all of this, Diplomat would not be what it is today. It's tremendous. I have never been more positive about the runway we have, or we talk a lot in the industry about the tailwinds, about the winds that are blowing in the direction that Diplomat's moving. Limited distribution drugs, small biotech companies becoming bigger and bigger players. And I believe Diplomat's independence, the fact that we aren't owned by a PBM, we aren't owned by a chain pharmacy, we are purely in the, in, in the specialty pharmacy business, uh, is a tremendous benefit for us. We've got employees with us today that have been with us over 30 years, and we've got a number of key employees that have been with us 20 years. And when I look out and I see those people that have been with Diplomat a long time, and even the ones that have been with us five and 10 years, when we've been through such dramatic growth, have just left their mark. And I always I say oftentimes that I get to stand in front of the room a lot of times when Diplomat gets recognized, but I'm really there just as a representative for a huge group of people that are working hard to take care of people every day.